Hello folks, for I'm the one, the only, I am a hobo Tom, and I am here finally back in my normal schedule. Thankfully, I've actually found a pretty good place for my microphone, where it's far enough away from the speaker where it's not reverbed, but yet I don't have to shout and scream, and actually I wonder how much I can more I can turn the, oh wow, how's that? Wow. That's actually a really good sounding. That's good. So that's where the volume's gonna stay. Yeah, there's a little reverb. That's not too bad though. A little feedback. I wonder if I just there we go. How's that? Yeah, that's good enough. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I'm finally back to my normal schedule of stuff. This is my Monday night raw review. And oh wow, I'm glad I took a food coma nap during it. Ooh, that is reverbing a little bit. That's just a little teeny bit annoying. But that's okay. I'm finally dialed in almost to the new Hobo Studios. Or my revised Hobo Studios again. That microphone is an amazing gift. And let's see here. Start off Monday Night Raw proper. I always have some thank yous to give out. I love when I talk to people. It makes me feel like I'm part of a community. It makes me feel like a a freaking human being for a change. So, the Ted DiBiase. Yes, thank you for confirming what my eyes did see. You, sir, always win twice. Ooh, that's six count. And Hyper Mako, yes sir, you are a master of the air guitar.
Then Matsu, you're just cruising along to your briefcase boombox. And wow, that's actually, that's actually a lot of notes for a rock. Well, that's weird. I won't well, start it off on that weird page. That's okay. So this was a kind of interesting case of the Raws where the wrestling really didn't advance anything. It was more of the story. This was more of a story based Raw. A lot more of the between match segments really played in, into key with this Raw. As we start off, um, Drew got jumped. Uh, he came out, cut a promo. He, he demanded an MVP. He wants to know what those two goons, um, Bane, Bane, and the Predator, like what's their what's their deals? So he gets jumped again by T Bar and Mace, or as I call them, Bane. Although Bane, no more, and no more the Predator. Then we see him. Um, so this leads us to our first match. Actually, this leads to, to Drew being very upset. He demands from Adam Pierce that he wants a match. He doesn't care. He'll take on both of them at the same time. Be very careful, Drew. Be careful what you ask for. Sometimes it might come true. I can put that there. Excellent. Uh, then our first match of the night, we had uh, Cedric Alexander and Sheldon Benjamin taking on the Viking Raiders. Wait a second. We, I saw this match last week. Uh, and this was one that I actually remembered last week because for the most part, the same thing happened. Um, Cedric, again, he's very fast on his feet. Eric's playing the small guy role. Jeez, I might as well just repeat my notes from last week. Ivar, again, he takes it to Cedric. However, the good basement drop kick onto Ivar by Cedric leads to Shelton getting in. Getting the advent. Wait. This is what happened last week. Boo, WWE. Boo. 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 Um, and let's see here. So, what else happened? Again, Shelton holds, holds Ivar in the ring. Ivar, again, he has a ninja roll for the tag. Again, we saw this ball stuff. This is terrible. They're just rehashing the same match. Because they couldn't be that that creative. They let people go. Oh, and by the way, folks, if you are... This message definitely goes out. Well, I'll, I'll go over this match and I'll tell you who this message goes out for. But yeah, the, um, Cedric hits a tornado DET. Ivar eventually... Uh, breaks that up off of Eric. Cedric, no lethal injection. Um, Cedric is dead. He gets, he gets to feel the Viking experience. Viking Raiders win, but you know what? I'm downgrading this match because this is the second time I saw it. The same result. I might as well have called the same match. This match is a ham sandwich. And again, for all those wrestlers that were released, I guess the reason why we're seeing this match again is because they've released so, so much talent they don't know what to do. Again, if you're an Australian... Who, who goes by Billy K? Yes. I just found a very good job for you, miss. And also you, Chelsea Green. Now hiring. You've reverted back to paper stuff. Mojo Rally would be a pleasure to work with you as well. So, I wonder how much more often I can do that from my bosses. You have to stop. Stop it. That's okay. I'll do it as often as I can. The company's getting free advertising. They should be thankful they have such loyal and somewhat dedicated employees like me sometimes. But yep, uh, then, so after that match, again, that was, uh, that was a ham sandwich or whatever. And Randy Orton was interview. Matt and Riddell shows up. Bro! The RK bro. Terrible. This actually led to the next match, and I was shocked. This was actually pretty good. Uh, Randy Orton versus uh, Riddle. Orton starts to work over Riddle pretty good. Again, uh, Matt Riddle went for the sleeper hold four different times. The bro, the bro, uh, bro mission four times. Uh, on the third time, Randy just pulled him by the hair. Fourth time, Randy escaped uh, to the ring, uh, outside the ring. 
This was actually pretty good. Um, and I'll tell you what. Outside the ring, Randy Orton's so great. I don't know what he did. I don't know what spring they have in that table. But Randy Orton did the backdrop onto the table. And Riddle literally, like, bounced off of it. That was pretty cool. I mean, he might be great selling. Orton's probably pretty good, too. And then Orton just the stomps, the stomps, the fingers, the ankle, the bootlace eye rake. That's really good. You do the trade of chops, which is good. Um, they get into a little bit more. Um, Riddell put on, applied the hanging triangle. Uh, Orton countered that. He got out of that. Because, again, he had a five kinds of break. Riddle broke it at four. Orton counters with the, the draping DDT. But then... Riddle found a way to counter the RKO. And this was unique because it was this match. It was the first time I saw it this match. But Riddle hit a crucifix. Kind of did a crucifix roll up. Orton was shocked. He lost. Riddle won. I'll tell you what. Because this was the first time. Solid cheeseburger match. Bravo. And then Sheamus and Adam Pierce is there. Adam Pierce is trying to goad him into being a fighting US champion. Sheamus is like, yeah, whatever. That's good. You don't want to do that too often. And then it started to take a turn for the boring. Uh, Shayna Baszler then and Nia Jax defend their belts versus Lana and Naomi. Naomi and Lana have a great entrance. I swear, Lana tapped Naomi on the butt too. I miss that, but yeah, I, she should like, grab the little. little, little, little Booty for herself. It's good. I wish I could do that. But yeah, um, Naomi again. She's very fast. Naomi and Lana they get fast tags on Nia Jax. Again, the way a he a face team would typically work with the monster heel, you want to get the fast tags. You want to be in and out. You don't want to tire yourself out. You don't want the monster heel to get a chance to grab you and and have and have your way with, with you. You that sounds terrible. Yeah. Oh. Um, there were there was a terrible, and I don't know if, if it was like a hangover night or something, but there were a lot of botches. There was a terrible one on two suplex. Naya kind of like instead of going straight up, she like fell to one side. Lana fell to the other side. It was just weird looking, not pretty looking. Uh, Shannon gets gets in. Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, they distract Nia Jax. Nia didn't slip for anything this this night, nor did she on uh, SmackDown Friday night. So I guess they're kind of over that, except for they're still beating it down to the ground, which is not good. Um, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose distract. Say, hey, look at this. Now look, now watch this. Now watch this clip. Listen, the only thing I want to see from Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke is something slip out or something fall down or something get jammed up too tight. That's all I have to say. But yeah, uh, with that, Nia Jax gets distracted. She goes to chase those two, leaving Shayna Baszler to be the sucker who gets buried again. Whenever Nia Jax is left, whenever Nia Jax has left Shayna Baszler, or whenever Shayna Baszler has a single match, for some reason she's getting buried. And that's not good, because Shannon Bezer deserves more than that WWE. Someone else might be leaving. Well, it won't be me, because this is kind of my, my hobby. Right, YouTube. Monetizing YouTube. But yeah, um, so with that, again, Shannon got double teamed. The, the double X Factor, well, that has to hurt. Fall straight flat on your butt and hamstring. And, and pelvic base. I think that actually did shorten Hulk Hogan by like two. By I forget it was his, he said it was four inches. I'm more inclined to think it was two inches just because of the compression in the spine. I don't know. I don't know though. As four inches seems like a bit much. Two inches seems a bit more reasonable. But yeah. So I, um, Lana and Naomi won. It was a can of soup.
Then we have Ms. TV and Maurice is there. You know who wasn't there? John Morrison. Maybe you will see John Morrison tomorrow with, with um, a, 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 a Frankie, Frankie Monet, also known as Ty Valkyrie, also known as Mrs. Mundo. So I was, the Miz and Maurice came out. They, they were going kissy face. They just need to have a live sex celebration and just get it out of their system. They had the champagne there. Damien Priest um, said, yeah, you talk a lot of garbage. You know, once he poured himself a champagne, it's called, called the cheap stuff. You know, Maurice just threw her glass in his face. That was going to happen. Uh, backstage, the New Day Rock. New Day Rock. With Matt Riddell. Um, yep, so they kind of hang out. And Kofi has a guitar. Kofi dished the trombone, which is terrible because the trombone seems more iconic with him. I cut it! Right, Billy Kay? You won't get tired of that. I cannot get tired of hearing that either. Again, come work. Well, not for me, but at least come work. Oh, this is a good paper. This is holding up a lot. There, there, right, right there. Then let's see here. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So it's uh, Kofi versus Elias. Elias is strumming things. He's like, this isn't the way my guitar is supposed to sound. And Xavier's... Oh, I think it's... Oh, happy birthday, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Happy birthday to you. It's a little happy birthday. The one Stone Cold Steve Austin. I guess because Kofi tried to play it on guitar, I'm like, I've heard that riff before. That's just like, that's what it sounds like. Very simple. I don't think it was Steve, Steve Austin's thing. The only reason why I'm guessing it's Steve Austin's birthday. It's because um, Corey Gray said, yeah, it's, it's his birthday. I just wish I had a Steve Weiser. And then oh, tomorrow's for tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have silver dollar pancakes, bro. That was terrible. That was from the last segment. Yeah, so um, Kofi getting us a, uh, hits a running knee to start the match. Uh, quick pin attempts. Um, Kofi... And did a, did a lot of other moves. Then there was like, I don't know what it was, but Elias was off because he botched a girl slam. Granted, he saved it by dropping Kofi kind of on the top rope. Um, he he came back, made a save. He had, he had a really great delayed vertical suplex. Uh, Kofi had to come back with a frog with a flying frog cross body. And, and then it just went down from downhill from there once. And you know, true professionals can kind of save themselves, or at least make fun of themselves, like with AJ Styles did when he, it was him versus the top rope. He at least came back. He checked the rope. Said, "No, I'm not going to do that." Did one of his other finishes. That's fine. Um, after that, after that Bosch Gorilla Slam, it just kind of seemed to go downhill from there. And then there was a whole bunch of Boshes. Uh, Kofi had trouble getting the trouble in paradise. It was counter the top rope boshes. Those are kind of always, always scary because the only thing you can really say to avoid something really bad happening off the top rope is you just have to jump down and say, yep, screw that. Uh, Elias hit the big elbow drop and, and that was it. Uh, this match just seemed botchy. It's a can of soup. Then we had Alexa's Playground with her weird little doll again and telling a story about how some girl wouldn't give her strawberry ice cream but she doesn't like strawberry ice cream so she beat her up anyway and Loth Lo told her to do it. Yeah, now it's just getting into the realm of the weird. Uh, Mandy and Dana then were backstage for an interview. As soon as Nia Jack shows up, they run. That kind of, kind of sounds about right. Angel Garza shows up. 
Let's see. We haven't seen Angel Garza in a while. Oh, he's, oh wow. Maybe it wasn't as long as I thought it was. And then we had the handicap match. Drew McIntyre taking on the Predator. And Bane! And wait. Bane! Uh, Drew jumps T-Bar to begin with. Or Bane. Uh, Bane then has a quick comeback. Drew hits a headbutt. Again, Scottish headbutt. Number two headbutt. Only behind the Samoan headbutt. Again, Samoan headbutt is the most protective move in all of professional wrestling. Scottish headbutt's coming up there, though. And then the chops. Um, are a couple of good moves. Um, the spine buster, again, he maybe has, like, again, the fourth best spine buster. That's saying a lot, though. I mean, Arn Anderson, best spine buster. Robert Roode. Second best mind buster. Carl Anderson. Third best spine buster. Even Bobby Lashley has a pretty good looking spine buster. But yeah, so yeah, fourth or fifth best spine buster. That's some pretty elite company though. <laughs> yeah, this another Scottish headbutt. Second time, and then it was a DQ finish, baby. Because the Preda and Bane kept on beating up Drew McIntyre. They wouldn't leave. Um, ref called for the bell. Ham sandwich of a match. Then once he called for the bell, they wouldn't stop. Braun Strowman comes to the save. Holla, 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 player! It's time for a impromptu tag team match. Um, so with this was Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre taking on Mace and T-Bar. Uh, Braun and Mace, they start off. Big, beefy guys. It's kind of very brawlerish type match. Uh, good trade of headlocks there for a while. Again, you're not going to have a really super technical match with, with hosses. But when they start trading headlocks, they're going to trade power moves, power holds. That's actually a pretty good way to book it. Then there was... And I don't know what happened, but Braun Strowman got a little cut on his head. I don't know if it was like... It, it, it wasn't so much being busted open. It looks like he like cut himself. I don't know if it's because he like headbutted the mask or something. Or if when he got tossed into the ring post... Like, it, it, like, again, remember, the ring posts themselves are metal or aluminum. The turnbuckle, that's solid. That's like tungsten steel. So if that has a like even tiniest of a burr on it, that's gonna cut you wide open. And it wasn't it wasn't like he cut an artery. You could just tell like that was a little light trickle of blood. He, honestly, I've seen him in the wrestling mat in, in college and high school. He honestly might have just popped a pimple or something too. So that's about what it looked like. Like because it was it wasn't bright red arterial blood. It was that kind of like. This sounds a little bit disgusting, but it's that kind of like orangey interstitial fluid blood mixture. So I'm thinking it, it was it was either not it was just like some weird coincidental contact or, or he popped a pimple on his forehead. I don't know. But yeah, I'm like cause it was like red it was a really small line of red. And you can see just like literally like tr like barely it's trickled down. Every again, every so often, in high, more so in high school. Again, sometimes someone would pop a pimple on the mat, and all of a sudden you see, see, see like, like this orange ooze on top of your head. That's kind of what it looked like. So it wasn't anything terrible. I don't, I don't even think the ref put gloves on either. Um, Drew got back in there, of course. Then, and I'll tell you what. Again, this match was suffering from, from the yips too. So no one could do a simple backdrop in this case. I don't know how, how like, um, Donovan, Donovan Dijak somehow saved his life somehow. Because he just, like, kind of flopped to the side. He, like, they said, oh, he got nine feet up there. No, he didn't. He just barely went over the shoulder. That was not pretty looking. Again, parts of this night made, made me think that the wrestlers were just in a haze. Or they're just getting adjusted. 
Because again, it is humid out there. The wrestling ring, even in an indoor arena, there's condensation. We, and I don't know how well they maintain or keep the arena in Southern Florida if it's not being in use. I know here in Daytona Beach at the at the one gym, the, the ropes get slick. There's condensation. It's weird. I, I've heard wrestlers complain about it. They're like, give me that freaking towel. Like, they have to wipe themselves off, wipe the ropes down. Like, between every match and every so often, if, if there's action outside the ring, the referee will quickly get a towel in and wipe the ropes down. So, it's, it's Florida weather, and, and it's really wonky sometimes. So, I don't know if it was just that. Again, you get slick in these arenas. Slick sweat and, and spandex, I don't think, necessarily mix as well. Again, that's why I've heard wrestlers, they, they tape up their wrists, not so much for for a brace, but they say, yeah, at least I can know I can grip that there if I need to. And that makes sense. Uh, Drew then did the ultimate insult. He, he ripped the mask off of Mace, and he started to hit him with it. And that led to a DQ. And I'm like, whoa, that's weird. And then I guess that wasn't expected. Maybe Mace did something to really piss Drew off. Who knows? But yeah, um, once his face was, was exposed, and then I guess, unless this was the grand plan, because then Braun Strowman ripped... He ripped my mask off, Batman. He exposed me to all of Gotham, Batman. Something that you could never do. Or you're a half the man, Batman. That Braun Strowman is Ryan Bane! So yeah, so Drew slapped. So, so like Drew like snapped and Braun ripped off Bane's master to beat him with it. And our next match features The Miz and Damian Priest. Um... I was thinking that during this, so, so uh, Miz, again, he was getting a little cocky, he started to go right after Priest, um, Miz got tossed somewhere, it looks like poor Miz died, <laughs> whoa, what's that, DP, what's that, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I'm like, whoa, I haven't, like, 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 Maurice grabs DP, I'm like, whoa, and then Maurice grabbed uh, Damien, Damien Priest, and that acts as the distraction. Again, Miz. Very typical, typical Miz moves. On the, on the drop kick. And then the, the kicks. Uh, however, he went for the dirty pin again. That wasn't going to happen. Damien Priest is wise to that. He reversed that on the Miz. Damien Priest wins. Yeah. I was upset that Johnny Mundo's not there. Who knows if we ever see Johnny Mundo back with the Miz. Hopefully not. Hopefully Mundo turns on Miz. That would be good to see. This match in itself, it was a ham sandwich. Then we had Seamus come up and say, yeah, you know what? I might give him an open challenge. I might not. We'll see week by week. You know what? Fella, whoever wants it, come on, try and take this from me. Umberto Carrillo Delegas comes out. And he gets whooped for his efforts. Um, so, Umberto it wasn't even a match. Umberto Carrillo versus Sheamus wasn't even a match. Dadegas, he just gets jumped. Very start. He goes into the one barricade, into the other barricade. And you know what that means. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cuckoo. It's like the I am the walrus song by the Beatles. I haven't heard that album in a while. I'll listen to that next. That's okay. He was hurled into both barricades. A 10 beats. The belfry. Then into the post. And then a bro kick. Shame is like, fella, you're done. Even though it wasn't a match, it was a pretty decent beat down. It's a ham sandwich. Then in the main event, it was Asuka taking on Charlotte Flair. And wow, that time off, Charlotte changed up her look a lot. One, she got, I know she had a mole or a wart somewhere on her chin. 
She had that removed because her face just seemed far. It seemed her her face seemed a lot smoother, a lot a lot slimmer. She lost weight, and I know I'm gonna catch a lot of flack for saying this, but again, in just my opinion, the humble opinion of the one, the only, Hobo Tom. She's getting a little too skinny. And she's getting to that, like, Stacy Keebler size skinny. Where, I mean, you could definitely see her rib cage. Her legs are long as anything. She came out dressed like a Disney uh, villain. Like a Disney female villain. Her ass got flat. Again, you could see ribs. And it's... Getting to the point of the Brit Baker abs. And what I mean by that, when I saw Brit Baker wrestle live, I said, oh my goodness, her waist is the size of my leg. I told my friend that. I'm like, you know, she's like, yeah, but Brit Baker has abs. Yeah, you know why you can see her abs? There's nothing else there. Charlotte's getting there. Now, whether it's, it's by her own choice, if it's her choice and she's happy with her body type, good to you. Not my taste. I like just a little something to hold on to. I need a little cushion back there. That's always nice. Um, some guys don't like that. Some guys like way too much mattress back there. I like a little cushion. I'm not a mattress man. Cushion's good. Cushion versus floor... Versus mattress. That's the way it goes. Um, her body just looked different. Her face looks... Di- and Charlotte... Charlotte's been known to get to go under the knife, too. So, so you never know what those surgeons in Mexico do, did to her. Um, with that, Asuka looks the same. To me, Asuka looks more feminine. And I know this will probably insult women, but Asuka... People say, oh yeah, she's right. she she looks healthy. She looks like a normal, proportionate woman. Uh, Rhea Ripley's just tall. She has the whole nose and piercing going, so that's not necessarily my thing. Charlotte just looks different. I don't know what it is. Who knows? Um, even when they showed highlights of Asuka, at least, um, Charlotte at least had some curvature to her. Before, where you see, oh, she has hips. Yeah, I like what's in the back. Again, a little cushion, a little cushion there. Now, the cushion's disappearing into a pillow. Or office seat chair, which is not a lot of cushion, by the way. So, yeah. It's not a full-blown mattress like Nia Jax. But, I mean, a nice nice cushion to, to rest your head upon. That's always a good thing. Because I do not want to rest my head upon that thing. Or probably for a lot of other reasons. But yeah. So I noticed that. Um, we Ripley looks in great shape. Uh, very fast. Fast paced match. The match only was seven minutes long. And again they took like two or three minutes for the commercial break in between. It was terrible for the main event. Um, fast kicks by Asuka to start off. Uh, then they did like a double neck breaker spot. Again, this match also seemed kind of botchy. It didn't seem like they weren't too sure what they were going to do on that apron. And sometimes, again, if there's condensation on that apron, they're holding onto the ropes, they slip. Um, do you never know? You're sweating a little bit too much. You can't get a good grip. Person's my uh, again. They're both. I'll say they, they're, they're both women. They both have women hair length. Again, hobo hair length, woman hair length. You don't know if the hair got in the way. Or something happened. Uh, weird, again, some weird freaky thing. The double nut breaker spot looked terrible. Um, on the apron. What else? Then Charlotte tried something else. Um, I did a move. For, uh, Charlotte did have a good looking spear though. I'll tell you what, she, her body got... got Parallel with the man on that spear that looked great. Got a two count off that. Uh, Asuka came back with the knees. 
and stuff. Then they start to trade. They almost went for the trade of submissions. Oscar tried to get the Oscar lock on Charlotte. Charlotte went for the figure four, not once but twice. Um, first time Charlotte uh, Oscar kind of kicked out of it. Second time, Charlotte was too close to the ring, and Rhea Ripley pulled Charlotte so she couldn't bridge. This made Charlotte mad. So now Charlotte's distracted. Um, Oscar came in with a crucifix pin, very similar to what we saw during the Randy Orton match. This is the second time we've seen it. So it's not original anymore. Um, so yeah, Asuka won by that. Charlotte's mad. Asuka picks up the win. Charlotte's mad. She beats up the referee. The referee did his job. Boo, Charlotte. She just wanted some more time off to fix herself up. Who knows? She wanted to go back to Mexico with Andrade. Who knows? Um, which is all mindless, baseless speculation, by the way. So yeah. That's how we're all ended, with a fizzle of Charlotte beating up said referees. Oh, this match, it, it was a ham sandwich of a match. It was just off. I do have some programming notes. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing, I think I've chosen, I think I'll probably do a live stream of NXT. I'll set up that computer for it. It's going to be a two-hour show, so it's not going to be that bad. So tomorrow is going to be... I do have to set up new graphics, so there's, there's a couple things I have to work on. Probably sometime tomorrow for that. Uh-oh, just fizzle down a little bit. Every so often. Yep, there we go. Back to its normal height. I'm goofing off in this chair too much anyway. And of course, I always do like to show off my Macho Man t-shirt. So tomorrow, it's going to be two-hour NXT... Kind of our R and R show. I'm gonna to try to get as much sound in as possible. I don't think I can get a lot of video in though. That tends to be bad. Wednesday night I have to work. Thursday night I have to work, so there's gonna be no impact those nights. Friday's gonna be a very typical red wine and pizza Friday. Uh, Saturday I'm off. Oh, Thursday there will be a prediction show. I'll probably do the predictions for I think Rebellion. If I saw the graphics right, Rebellion on Impact is this Sunday? I wonder if something was happening. Or if they're going to have this, or maybe, oh, because it was supposed to be, I think, almost Mother's, Mother's Day. Maybe they're, 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 they're doing something, I don't know. We'll see. So on Rebellion, I'll be here Sunday. I'm going to make myself a nice sausage, egg, bacon, and cheese breakfast sandwich, breakfast sub. I'll munch on that. Share up, share some impact rebellion. I have to do make that means I have to make graphics and stuff, but that's okay. I work, I get off early Saturday so I can get that done for Sunday. Sunday's a typical short day, I think, or at least till 8 30. I might miss maybe the first couple matches. I will see how, how that goes. Forget it, I eat, it all depends on, 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 on silly human beings, but yeah. So again, you should see me a couple times this week on a little bit more normal schedule. Again, if Billy K, Chelsea Green, Mojo, please make my job more regular so I can do my hobbies and not have to work as much as I do. Again, we're now hiring. We're here in the greater Daytona area, folks. Yeah, Rock Room's hiring. So again, now hiring. You know you need a job. You need to work. Get back to work, you son of a bitch. So that being said, I